Hello, welcome to the channel. Um, for today, we're going to try and demonstrate on a flow performance uh, flow bench um, the effect of what happens when we take a 4V cylinder head and we add port stuffer in here and we're going to see what it does for flow. Um, we'll take some readings and we'll work out the hows and whys this might have worked or could work if you perform this on your cylinder heads. Um, I've done some preliminary playing around and from what the flow bench tells me this isn't really a good idea. But anyway, let's get into it. The valve is set 0.65 inches down and in down off the seat and at that lift it's flowing its maximum capacity. These are shot down its throat with uh, basically modeling clay. Get out of it. Filled up to 49 millimeters, which is not that different from the height of a 2V, but it's still got the width of a 4V. Okay, port back on the bench. Um, and just done some preliminary testing, and it's quite interesting. And in fact, um, I'm wrong um, and I'll turn on the bench and you can see why I'm wrong now before I get there though uh, the important note is the valve is back to where it was which is 0.65 inch lift and so the only change for the comparison before is the clay on the bottom filling the bottom of the port uh, as you saw before so I'll turn on the bench and uh, you can see the flow number. Yeah, I'll probably get shot for it, but 
all right we're all closed up just over 37 mil see if i can get this in here there we go so close enough to 37 mil without getting too carried away so there's that and just actually to show you this isn't a um surprisingly this isn't the uh 2v this is a sorry it's not a 2v it's not the closed chamber it's the open chamber which is why it flows 300 cfm and not the supposed 275 so it does show that the closed chamber uh, does have some shrouding issues that um, should be overcome and just a extra little piece they are oh get in there they're a stock casting I haven't gone in and I haven't ported in there they're not ported you still see that big casting flat it's not really that big but you can still see the lump where the material is and the interesting thing is on the forefee as well is you can see how much more extra room there is on the wall side of the port uh, the cylinder wall side of the port to get the air to come around and down and over the back so what I'm meaning is is that air comes along this way it runs down the port along over this side and then as it enters it enters this side of the port uh, this side of the valve so it's all over here in the unshrouded area of the port so and the other one too is it even though the 2v uh, keep getting that mixed up the closed chamber has the gap that runs across that shoe show you here as you can see on the 2v oh my dad did it again as you can see on the 4v this area is much closer but it's also in here so it might be of benefit to lay this edge back a little bit and also this extra area as you can see on the shine okay it's probably better on that one as you can see by the shine there is a bit of room between here and the head gasket it would be a good idea and probably beneficial to remove the material away from this up to the edge of the gasket saying it's not really doing anything it's not really doing a purpose so mark uh, scribe your gasket along this edge and take a little bit out of this area and you will potentially flow the same as mine as this one as this head all right let's get it on the head uh get it on the bench with uh sorry about the light let's get it on the bench and we'll see what this smaller port does all right back on the bench back on the bench valves are 0.65 inch extra piece of clay in there the test today was conducted under the idea of what port stuffers were originally designed to do and that was to reduce the area of the intake port yet maintain the flow so this would increase the ramming effect into the cylinder using my dynamation software i was able to create these three theoretical dyno plots um, by taking the flow bench data that i i got i had to go and take samples at 50 thou and this and the port area um, and enter them into the software along with a a whole lot of parameters with camshaft, intake, manifold, exhaust, timing, um, yeah, ignition timing, fueling, all sorts of good stuff. Anyway, the generic overlay is is that uh, the factory port, the largest port, is one on the bottom. The floor that was raised is the next highest, where the biggest output comes from the smallest port. Interesting enough is that all of these take uh, the diversion point of the smallest point uh, port <clears throat> excuse me the smallest port 
happens at after three and a half thousand and there's very minimal change below that point so air speed while this air speed should be uh, of main benefit to low end torque but in this circumstance this isn't the case so we need to do a little bit more digging and I'll move on to the next one just as before um, this dyno plot was the same specifications it's just the green line is the addition of a fourth test which is where I took the standard 4v port and the cam that was that I had selected which was I think from memory was 290 seat to seat and a 230 duration at 50 thou it had 108 center line on the intake and 112 on the exhaust and all I did was take that camshaft and advance it six degrees so it went to a 102 on the intake and I think it was at um, 118 on the exhaust in other words the exhaust opened six degrees earlier and shut six degrees earlier the intake also opened six degrees earlier and shut six degrees earlier by closing the intake valve earlier we're trapping more mass and we have to do that because the port is so big there is no ramming effect or less of a ramming effect than what other cylinder heads have been designed to accomplish so the way we have to get around that the way we get around that is we close the intake valve early now when you um, play with cam timing this has a very similar effect as when you play with multi-valve engines multi-valve engines like the same parameters as do they like an intake valve opening early and they also like it closed early as well they build a lot more mid-range low and mid-range torque and it's just the sheer fact that the air uh, the head can process so much air which is your cfm demand and that's where and why these engines can create high top end power and low end torque so it's not surprising that a multi-valve cam timing um, would benefit the cylinder head because of its port size and its valve size and um, has similarities with a multi-valve engine where a multi-valve would probably have a, a larger port size and more surface area to contend with when when feeding its cylinder head uh, when feeding its cylinder so if anything is just to be taken away from this is that the cam timing is more important for a 4v than just simply making the port smaller so when selecting a camshaft for your cleveland be sure to put an advance in it so hopefully that will um this will conclude this video and uh yeah thank you for watching and um, i'll see you in the next one see ya